One thing that we need to know when dealing with the room entity is that it becomes a type only when its parameter is closed with building envelopes object, such as the building envelopes either linear or curved, the linear or curved curtain wall, or the dummy envelope used for separating open space into specific areas. Here you can see how I close the perimeter with a dummy envelope entity to define the room correctly and assign it with a label. Each room can be defined in different areas. In the tree navigator on the left, and in particular in the zone node, we can create three zone levels. On the first level I want to create two areas. Apartment 1 colored in purple and the relating color section tool. Same thing for apartment 2 for which we will assign another color and pattern. For other levels, such as for this living area, we will add further info and proceed in the same way for this sleeping area and assign it with this other color too. So we have defined a color map for our zone and internal spaces. Now we need to allocate the zones. Going back to the ground floor, we can make a multiple selection of all objects, access the filter tool on the right, set the selection criteria, adding the rooms that belong to apartment 1, and then choose whether we want living area or sleeping area. Or we can select only the rooms in this area and assign the living area tag, while the remaining rooms have the sleeping area tag. This will allow us to see the zoom directly in the view, so we have seen the various color. We can view only the area 1, relating to the apartment 1, or we can view area 2, and then the final color code for day and night area. We can use area subdivision when needing to identify residential areas, office, garage, or other arrangements to group up together in summary tables. Let's now take a quick look at the internal design aspect and how to use the 3D models. Allow me to underline that you can find an infinite range of design assets in the online beam object library available for free. And look for the interior design element. Here is a folder containing a selection of tables and chair. Let's try to insert this. Let's now get another object. For example, in the armchair and sofas folder, we want this sofa. Confirm. We then bring it into position and continue with as many objects that we need until the entire apartment is completed. As I said before, the beam object library is completely online and are reached with new objects and resources every day by both the Akka software support team and the Akka users community. This button allows us to access the library. Notice how many different interior and exterior resources you can use to detail your projects, like kitchens, sofas, bedroom, decoration or urban furniture, lighting and so on. You simply select the object and click on the download button. Once downloaded, you simply insert the object as seen previously. Let's see what's happening in 3D view. Here, we can enable a dynamic section box to cut through the model. This button activates the section box, allowing me to see internal design aspects that I normally can't see when I look in the entire building from outside. Here are the objects inserted earlier. Let's switch back to normal view. The section view box can also be used to model our building. We can enter our room in this way, then hide the box and continue the 3D modeling process by inserting other objects such as our technical systems and installation objects. This can be device boxes or junction boxes.
For the sake of this example, we will just insert one here with a click, then define its rotation and click again to fix it into position. We will insert another one here and notice the great precision, even when defining the graphical representation of our device box. With the object selected, we can proceed to further options to set its color and shape, like rectangular, round, and so on. And if these settings work well for us, we can choose to extend the same style to all the other device boxes already present in our model. But that's not all. Every single model in our device box can be detailed according to their function graphically. The properties box on the right allow me to choose which type of component we want and therefore choose among the various types like a power outlet, model plug, a switch and so on. There are so many to choose from and they are all here in the library. In our case, let's go for the power outlet for example. Let's close the section box view and go back to the ground floor. Here we can see all our objects that can of course be realigned and adjusted using the various object grip. Let's move on to the document production and composing our drawing models. When we open the object menus, at the bottom here we have the specific objects that once inserted in our level will automatically generate the following views. The area plans, floor plans, cross sections, elevation views, asonometric views and then we have these nodes here for our rendered images. Let's see the area plan. To generate this type of document we simply click to place it within the level workspace and see that this new node is added as a subnode here in the project navigator tree menu. The same applies when needing to generate a floor plan. First click in the level and then simply define an horizontal cutting plane or a vertical offset. The value inserted in this box here is expressed in meter. Then we confirm to generate the drawing model, which is added as a sub-node. To generate a crossing section drawing model, we trace the section line from the start to finish, set the viewing direction with the F5, and again its relating document is added as a sub-node for use when composing our project working drawings. The drawing model types that we have just seen here are all inserted from the levels view and defined therefore in 2D, while for the axonometric view this is generated from 3D view. Once selected, we simply trace a rectangle for the area that we want to represent. When viewing our drawing model, we also have a few more settings that allow us to activate or deactivate material colors, show or hide shadows, and choose over type of graphics.